Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Understanding inequalities. Let's take a look at the concepts of this lesson. And of course, we're talking about less than or greater than. Now, these are called inequalities. And an equal sign in an equation or an expression is, of course, when something is the same. Now, I want to talk briefly about how we use these symbols. Um, if you have a certain result that you want, usually you're going to use that equal sign. But in some word problems or concepts, sometimes you want to be less than or below a certain amount, or maybe greater than or above a certain amount. All right? Um, sometimes, obviously, you're looking at lower. Maybe you want a stock price lower than a certain amount or greater. Okay, you might see some of those words. Lower, greater, above, more than, and so on. Well, you get the idea. So basically, it's how it compares to one amount, whether you're below or above. Now, also, you might see something like uh, maybe you won't buy something unless it is at least a certain amount at least now what that means is it can be a certain amount but it can also be above it alright so when you see at least now get a little confusing here but the words at least is a greater than or equal to type of situation alright and at most maybe you won't buy something if it's at the most thirty dollars or whatever the amount is okay that means it'd be great if it's below that but it cannot be higher than a certain amount. So look for these kinds of words in story problems, word problems, and if you see that, that is an inequality, okay? Now we're gonna look at inequalities on a number line and also take a look at how we do it algebraically. So on a number line, here's how you graph an equation or an equality. Let's say you get the answer of x equals 2 and then you're supposed to graph the solution. Well, that's just going to be a nice big solid dot on the 2. And that's the only answer it can be. All right? And that's called a closed dot or a closed point. Okay? That's for equals. Sorry, if you have greater than or equal to 2, then you include the 2 as a solid dot. But you could also include the 3, you can include the 4, and the 5, and the 6, and all these other numbers that go forever. You could also include all these fractional and decimal numbers, too, that are in between. Now, of course, it takes too long to dot them all and show them on the number line. So what we do is we make a solid line, and we show that it goes forever. So we put a very large arrowhead on the right. So that's the graph of x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, in the case of x being greater than 2 but not equal, it, we change the dot, okay? Now it's going to be an open dot, sometimes called a white dot. And that shows that it can't be 2 itself, but it can be above it. So you still have answers like 2.8, 2.1, 3.7, 4.5, and so on. So you still need to shade the line in, put an arrowhead going to the right because it's greater than, but now it's an open dot on the 2. Now let's look at x is less than or equal to negative 1. Well, it says equal to the, with that bar down there, so we are including a negative 1. And we're going to go ahead and put a solid dot on the negative 1. And it goes to the left because we want everything smaller than that. Okay, so we darken in that side of the line. And it does go forever in that direction, so we put an arrowhead there. All right, that's what x is less than or equal to negative 1 looks like. Now if we take that equal bar off and we have x is less than negative 1, now it's an open dot, shown as a white dot here. We're not including negative 1, but it is everything below it. Now it's time for you to try. On a piece of paper, just briefly sketch these number lines out. And I would like you to do 1 through 6 here, and it says draw a graph for each inequality. So put in either your solid dot or your open dot and then shade in to the right or left, 
depending on the symbol. Go ahead. All right, let's check your answers. Now for number one, it says less than or equal to two, so solid dot on the two and less than means you're going in that direction getting smaller. Number two, less than negative one, right, it's a white or an open dot. You can't include the negative one, but it's everything below it. Number three, less than or equal to six, include the six and go to the left. Number four, greater than negative four, not including negative four, but getting bigger to the right. Number five, V is greater than negative one. Okay, don't include the negative one. Notice how there's no equal bar there. So white dot there and going to the right. And number six, N greater than two. That's not including the two going to the right. All right, to finish this video, here we have a graph of an inequality and I want you to write it in algebraic terms. So in other words, take a look at the dot there and let's just pick our own little letter, uh, let's say K, and you notice how you are including the negative four. So you are going to make an uh, equal bar there and it is getting bigger to the right. So it's K greater than or equal to negative four. All right, you try the rest. All right, number eight, you can see that it's N greater than or equal to six. Remember that the actual letter you use doesn't matter. But in number nine, you are going less than negative one, not including it, white dot there. Number 10, again, it's less than, not including the number, so that's two and below. And number 11, M is less than or equal to negative four. This time you're including the four, so solid dot there. And number 12, you have six and lower, or less than six. All right, thank you for participating in this. And look for the next video, which will have us solving some inequality equations. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.